Hi there. Um, thank you very much, Barbara. That was great. It was very inspiring. Um, I just wanted to say that um, it has been amazing to sit here and to listen to so many different uh, speakers and I find these events extremely inspiring. And I'm fortunate and I get to come and tell you my story. So my name is Julia and I own a company called Preloved. And for some of you who are not familiar with Preloved, what we do is we take vintage clothing, we completely deconstruct it, we turn it into fabric, and then we use that fabric to create the collection each season. And we've been doing that for about 18 years. I was 11 at the time when we started. <laughs> that joke never gets old. <laughs> um, we have one retail store here in, uh, sorry, in Toronto on Queen Street West and a very large wholesale business. We are carried in probably about 300 different independent boutiques. We have a collaboration that we do with different retailers uh, with Roots Canada. We have Roots by Preloved, um, Preloved for Holtz. Um, we've also just launched this holiday, which will be Preloved for Indigo. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's I mean, very, very fun that way. We're probably one of the largest manufacturers of reclaimed fabrics in the world. Um, our volumes are quite large now, depending on the different places that we carry to now. Um, when I started the company 18 years ago, I have to be completely honest with you, and the impact that we were making in the environment was not at the forefront. Um, I always call myself the accidental environmentalist. I am just learning as fast as everybody else is and educating myself as quickly as, as we can do. Um, and it, it's very exciting as I learn. I was down in New York once speaking on a panel about eco-fashion. I'm like, oh, sure, yeah, let's go do that. That sounds like fun. And so we were talking about trends and forecasting and all the things that I love to talk about. And then I had questions from the audience, and somebody wanted to know about my water consumption. Oh, okay, well, 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 I better look into that. Never even thought about it, because we wash everything. Never even crossed my mind that washing used clothing would be a bad thing. Um, so then we went back and we looked through it and figured out, I mean, really, yeah, that was always the problem. Everyone used to always ask me, is it clean? Is it clean? So I'm like, yes, it's cleaned. Um, so we went back and we looked through it and we realized that, you know, maybe putting it through a dry cleaning process is better. And we have an eco dry cleaning that we go through now. And we wash the product through the dry cleaning when it becomes a full pre-loved product. So we're not washing all of the raw. But this was just a a thing that we learned along the way. And uh, so it, it, it's interesting. I, as I say, though, I am the accidental environmentalist, and I'm learning as fast as everybody else can. Um, but the one thing that I always am and always have been is an entrepreneur. I have an entrepreneurial spirit, and that's what feeds me. I mean, the biggest joke with my staff is I don't even know how to sew. I don't know how to thread a needle. I wouldn't, you know, I'm pretty good with scissors and fantastic with a stapler. But it's, yeah, sewing is not my thing. But I have an eye, an eye, I know what I like. I love to redesign clothing, I, you know, and I see it in my eight-year-old daughter. She puts on a dress and she instantly, mm, I should be like this, or I should be like that. Oh, I love it. Um, so, you know, I've got an entrepreneurial spirit and that is what I have. And that's what has guided us through these last 18 years. Um, I'm going to show you a video right now. This is actually, as I try to get this to come up, uh, a video from our fashion show in 2010. Is this going now? Did I do it? Or did I ruin it? Oh, no. Am I shaking it down? No, it's working. Is it working? <laughs> okay, come and help. You make it go. Okay. Please. Yeah, is it going to come up? Yeah. Um, this collection is really uh, a really exciting collection for us and a really big pivotal part of pre-loved and being in business for as long as we are. Um, so if you watch the collection and then I can explain to you afterwards why it is so important to us at Preloved and what a big point this was for us.
So, oh, let's, let's, whatever, skip that one. Um, even when I watch that, I always get, still get a little bit emotional watching that collection. If any designers are in the room, you understand how much work goes into putting a collection together every season. That 2010 collection for us was such a pivotal point. Everything on that runway that you saw was 100% made out of old clothes. Everything. Everything. And it was curated like that, put together, brought down the house that week at Fashion Week, if I must say so myself. And it was just a point where I was like, oh my God, we've done it. We've actually done it. We have gotten rid of every stigma that goes with taking old clothes and making them new. This is fashion at its best. Not one person is going to think this is a bunch of old, smelly, used clothing. This is amazing. You know, and the business had started to change so much at that point, forcing us, in, not forcing us, choosing to go into a wholesale model where we're selling at Holt Renfrew, we're selling at the Bay and the White Space, and all these great things are happening. And we put that together, it was amazing. And then I just sort of went, where do we go from here? Where do we go? This is as, as good as, it, like, as amazing as it can. How can, we, how can we make it better than that? How, how many times can I recycle sweaters? How many times can we keep doing this? We are becoming limited in our design choices and what we can do. And also, as the model is changing into wholesale, you know, in the buyer world, the term assorted is not a good word. People do not like to know when they're buying their clothes for the next season that they don't know what they're going to get. And the whole, trust me, don't worry, it's going to look really good, doesn't work really well when you're dealing with large companies. So it became a real point after that show that we were like, let's start figuring out what we can do. How can we change this? How can we still stay true to our brand, but evolve? I mean, at that point, I've been doing this for 15 years. So we needed to come up with different ideas. And so this season, actually, it's 2013, the collection's on the floor right now, we did blended new fabrics. We went and sourced new fabrics that would blend with the vintage, that would give us an easier way of manufacturing, open up a new window for creativity, and be able to produce a product here in Canada and still be able to be price conscious and in a marketplace. Um, so it was, it was just a, it was a great move, and we started it after such a high, where you thought this was just going to go forever. We decided to, at that point, start changing before we have to, so that's what we've been doing. With the change, that still being said, with the le levels that we produce at, we recycle over 80,000 sweaters a season. 
50,000 wool trousers, that's, we use that a lot. We take men's wool pants, deconstruct it, open it up, and use that for the fabrics. We still do all that, but now we're blending with it. Trench coats is another great fabric that we work with. Trench coats is very. Our design team are very inspired by the vintage clothing, the original buttons and the things like that that inspire us, and that comes through in our final, um, our final pieces. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our manufacturing and how we manufacture our product, which I said earlier is all done in Toronto. People ask me all the time, it's just all the time, all the time, where do you get your clothes? Where do you get all the used clothes? Where do you get that much? Um, all of our raw fabrics that we use come like this, and it comes in the form of a bale. That's a bale. That's a thousand pounds of white cotton, apparently. Um, and we buy all of our fabrics like that. That is how it comes to us. Um, we source it from what's called a rag house. And if you're not familiar with a rag house, what a rag house does is they're actually used clothing sorters. So I would say people always think used clothing may have value or whatever. The bulk of a value within used clothing is when it, it becomes volume. Sort of one t-shirt may, may or may not have value. But when you get you know, 100 pounds of white cotton t-shirts, now there is markets where this can be sold off and can be done. A lot of the market would be third world countries where they would sell off to third world countries, that kind of stuff. Me, we buy it. Um, so that's, that's how we purchase it. That's how it comes to our, our manufacturing site. When it arrives, my team, we go through the bale. So we open up the bale and we start sorting into yes, no, yes, no, what we can use and what we can't use. Um, now, you know, become a huge conscious effort over the years. We turn around and before we go yes, we take a look at the no pile. And we're like, what can we do with this? Um, so we now have a children's line that uses up smaller pieces, so we can have the kids' line. Uh, we have a home line that we can use as well. Uh, again, uses up most of the extra pieces. Our accessories, we do scarves, mittens, handbags, that kind of stuff uses up the pieces that we cannot use. Then once we've gone through all of that, we donate a ton of it to uh, local artisans that do very similar things that we do, recycling, upcycling, we donate a lot off. Uh, we donate to the school system as well, the TDSB does a pickup and they use it for crafts and things like that. And then as a last resort, it goes back to our clothing recyclers and they have their own. So it's actually something we're very proud of now is our waste that we can't use is very, very minimal if we don't use it. Um, then we turn around and we go to the yes pile. And this is now what we can use for our main production line, which is mainly a women's line. Um, and something like this sweater is our Miss Ellie sweater. And this would be by far our number one selling body of all times. We produce minimum each year 4,000 units of that sweater. Um, and to create that sweater, it takes four vintage sweaters. So just in the production of the Miss Ellie alone, we are recycling 16,000 sweaters. Um, so it's, it's uh, very, very impressive when you see numbers that are that large, when you start working with numbers like that. Um, people ask me all the time about entrepreneurship. And if I think an entrepreneur is born or made. And I always say it's a combination of the two. I think all of us are born with an entrepreneurial spirit. It is in us, some darker, deeper than others, some shining bright like you wouldn't believe, but it's there. It's that idea when you look straight ahead and you don't look sideways. When two plus two does not equal four. Spelling does not count. <laughs> I can't spell. Uh, that spirit is in all of us. But good entrepreneurs, they are made. And a good entrepreneur, I think what happens is that majority of entrepreneurs have egos. And I think that that is the hardest thing to get over. When I had started Preloved, we had, um, I had read this book called The Entrepreneurial Myth. And I was like, read this whole thing. And then at the end, it says, oh, you can take these you know, free classes where you call and they answer all your questions. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. So I phoned and explained what you do. And I had told her that you know, I do the sales and that's my job. And so then the woman said to me, so you do the sales? I said, of course I do the sales. She says, you're really good at sales. I'm like, oh, you betcha I'm good at sales. Like, I am the best. She said, nobody can do sales better than you. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm picturing my design team. Like, no way. I am the best. And she said to me, you'll be out of business by the end of the year. I was like, what? And she said that this is the problem that most entrepreneurs have, is that they see themselves as the best doing what they do, and nobody can do what you do better. And this is what will stop you, because you can't keep growing if you're constantly doing the one thing. So if you open up, become flexible, 
um, see things differently. And you know, I always say my greatest talent at all is hiring phenomenal talent. And I'm able to get the pride and excitement by working with people every day and seeing what they create and seeing what they do. And it's by being flexible. I mean, if you'd asked me 15 years ago if we would be you know, working with new fabrics and trying to learn out where fabrics are made, I'd be like, no way. I like old stuff. It's so fun, all the vintage. But you have to evolve and change and think. And I think that's what becoming a good entrepreneur is about. Um, in closing, I'm going to show you another video, um, and this is a sort of really good look behind the scenes of my team and who I get to work with every day and basically how our product is made and how we put it all together. This was done for a pilot for um, Green Living Television, which um, actually never made it to air. That's okay. We end up on the editing floor, but that's all right. We got a great pilot out of it. Uh, just so you know, I'm not usually this aggressive with the staff. It was a reality doc soaps show, so I'm supposed to come across as the, how do you say, polite, bitchy boss. Um, so yeah, but it's great to show you my team that I work with and how we make our product. I'm so over, like, oh, prelip's so hard to cut and sew. That's the kind of crap that we've been hearing for years. Yeah. I don't ever want to hear that prelip is hard to cut and sew again. I but just it, don't. It's, but it is. But it's not. But it is. But it's not. You're it's lying. Pre-Love is a fantastic clothing philosophy. What we do is take used clothing, completely deconstruct it, turn it into fabric, and then use that fabric to create our collection each season. Once Peter Friesen, our head designer and, and uh, creative director, once he came on board, that's when it evolved. Do we have a fit model issue? I mean, we have that... Kind of, where you Who? don't have a fit model. Yes, yeah, I thought maybe... That's, a, that's, that's the issue. issue. That's the issue. We um, fired our old one. Every single piece is different due to the vintage fabrics. It's kind of like an oxymoron. I'm trying to mass produce a one-off. And that eventually, you get stopped. It, get, it gets tough. It really, really does. I would say our biggest challenge at Preloved is tracking down enough used clothing. Do you know when the delivery date is for these? Do you even know when this is supposed to be done by? They were supposed to be selected by August 31st. Okay, so, and when you say, when you say to them, and they know the delivery date, are, you, are they talking October 5th? Are they talking October 15th? Like a week and a half to process and pack all this stuff is already going to be intense, even if they're all there on the 5th. I just can't even deal with these sweaters. I know they're going to come back looking like shit. When Julia gets upset, things get a little heated sometimes. Normally she'll be okay and, you know, apologize for maybe having a bit of a blowout. They have, like, toilet paper in the bathroom and stuff like that. <laughs> Let's start breathing and let's go friggin' find these sweaters. We'll go through probably 80 to 100,000 pounds of sweaters in one season. This is not bad. This, I told him. This is, yeah. This is one quick look. This is like Giorgio Armani selecting from his bolts of textiles in Italy, except here Jules has come to the cradle of reclaimed fashion in Clifton, New Jersey. Okay, sometimes you just got to do a little shopping. Oh, man! Lexi takes care of all of the recycled materials. Now I also have to deal with the, the cutting department, the sewing department. I have to make sure that they cut things correctly. They can also mix everything up at the sewing stage and end up with the sleeves of one style on a sleeve of another. This isn't going to be good. Are you joking? We're just concerned because you're saying that you have over a hundred of each done and they're nowhere to be found. Next week, they're all supposed to be done. So let's just hear them sing and dance that one. Can you look at the Heathers that are here? No. We Can just... you take me to them, yeah. please? They're in the pressing. They're in the pressing? OK. Decide if it's anthro-worthy, get a tag on it, put it in the size bin, put it in a pre-pack, put it in a box, and get out the freaking door. Our next big trade show will be in February, and that is when we'll be wholesaling our fall 2010 collection. That's what you have on. That's what I have on. So I'm not going to tell how old I am, but I have three kids and I like wearing it. A woman would not be caught dead in something in this palette versus this. Do you know what I mean? At the exact same time, Shelly will just be getting the spring 2010 collection on the retail floor. I guess it's standard to make something two inches smaller. Oh. I don't know how Julia does it. She somehow runs this company and at the end of the day goes home to her children and her husband and does both. I'm very fortunate. I do a job that I'm completely passionate about, which actually makes it all worth it. There's going to be a lot of growth that's going to happen within the next year. And I think that's, that's always the line of it. If you're not busy growing, you're busy dying. Could you believe the network thought I was like one dimensional? <laughs>
<laughs> me. Uh, anyways, thank you very much. It was really lovely to speak to you.